All right, and here we go in three, two, one. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today, sir? You know, I got a little bit of sun before it started to rain. Got a, got a, hey, by the way, um, I always like to leave a, I always like to leave a, a prompt for people on YouTube to leave a comment. If your lawnmower starts, but doesn't stay started, what's probably wrong with it? In the YouTube comments, go. Um, <laughs> or maybe we'll give you a football related one later in the show. We'll find out. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 lawnmower is not a high motor player it takes plays off it's also right. a, it's also a, a lot older than most of the other lawnmowers in the draft but we're not here to talk about the draft guy we're here to talk about this spring game yeah because the spring game matters so much right jared hey kyle Listen, first, you're right. You're being sarcastic. It's fine. You're being a little mm -hmm. sarcastic. Uh, eh, saying that the spring game matters so much, insinuating the opposite that it in fact does not. But Kyle, can I can I talk podcast with you for a second? If we're about to do an entire show talking about the spring game, maybe don't tell everyone before we even get started that the spring game doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it doesn't create. And I'm not even saying you're wrong. But it does not create the, uh, it's bad advertising, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Bad but, after advertising. A but after a three and a half month hiatus of football, uh, I'll take it. Get, get to watch, get to watch, get to watch the Buckeyes uh, this last weekend here. So I'll, I will take it because after, after this, after our recording here, Jared, it is officially the wasteland. Again. Yeah, the, <laughs> Again. Hold on. No, 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 no. We're, we're not in the wasteland yet. Not in the wasteland yet, and I'll tell you why. We have the draft coming up. That's fun. Um, the transfer Fair. portal is about to open back up. It's going to be open for two weeks. Um, so we're going to have a lot of transfer portal talk here for a little bit. So that'll be fun. Um Recruiting is still in full swing. In fact, Ohio State picked up two commitments this weekend. Matt LeBlanc or LeBlanc. I'm not sure which one. I'm going to say Blanc because I believe he's maybe from Canada and it might be French. I don't know. The uh, transfer portal is going to be insane. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it, it's all, I mean, it's, it's already like it's it's just that insane is kind of its baseline, but we'll see wh what it's like for Ohio State specifically. Um, and and then, Kyle, we have um, something else. I don't know. I lost my train of thought, but it's not the wasteland yet. Um, sad to see. Is he is, is he leaving? Um, I don't want to say it unless it's unless it's confirmed gangland um but yeah i mean oh, there's gonna be some ohio state players leave of course there'll be some players leave um but we don't need to don't get into speculate though yet yeah but i don't really want to speculate on any of that um i mean you can look at you know maybe the wide receiver room and say wow there's so many dudes there and you can make speculations if you want to but I prefer not to. Um, what we are going to be looking at as far as the transfer portal, and by we, I mean Ohio State, because I'm a professional. Um, <laughs> uh, Ohio State, I, I think, absolutely. And, you know, if you've been following, like, all of the reports at a spring camp, whether it be, you know, Tony and Tom or anyone else, I don't think you saw anything during the spring game. That that should surprise you. Um, I did. And there was a there was a quarterback who had a twenty five yard average um, per carry in the spring game. Jared, good for him. Listen, 
I, I, I can't, I can't no. respect, I can't respect your, your yards per carry if you're wearing a black jersey and the rest of the team isn't. He wasn't wearing, he wasn't wearing a black jersey. You said quarterback. Did I say quarterback? Excuse me. <laughs> oh, a look at back, that. A running back had a 25-yard average per carry. I apologize. A running back had a 25-yard. Nope, not chip. Also, average is too Heisman. <laughs> there you go. Too Heisman a career <laughs> average. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> you could have seen that coming. Arch, uh, Arch is... 50th anniversary with the team marked um old man still has it hey um he wasn't wearing a black jersey but he was also he was just as no con even more so no contact <laughs> with no helmet <laughs> he can move for his his age he absolutely can god did they wear yeah. helmets back in arches day <laughs> oh stop it <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I don't know. All right, it, um, it was it was a fun moment. Yeah, but, high, uh, high, le back, yeah high level, okay. high level, though, but, Jared, but, but, of Kyle, the, of I, the I was, spring game. I was going okay. somewhere before you were bringing up. I, I said we didn't really see anything that surprises us. And we started talking about yada, yada. Um, one of the things we saw that I think we expected to see is the Ohio State defensive line utterly dominate the Ohio State offensive line. I think you have one unit which could very easily be the best in the country. Ohio State's defensive line could be the best defensive line in the country. And it's definitely better than any defensive line Ohio State will play during the regular season this year. Mm -hmm. That the, no doubt in e either of those uh, statements, Mike Hall looked insane. Yeah, he did. So, uh, Mike Hall, especially, I, I yeah, I, I agree. Um, but again, if you were following all the reports at a training camp, that's not a surprise. Um, the offensive line lost th three critical players. And they're having to replace those three critical players, and that's tough. Especially since that's been Ohio State's weakest point in recruiting the past few years is offensive line. Mm -hmm. They made a switch at the offensive line coaching role because of the lack of recruiting along the offensive line. Um, and unfortunately, even if Fry comes in and Fry fixes that recruiting, you still need to wait a couple years for those guys to sort of get in place. Um, what you have right now is a situation in which I think can only be remedied via the transfer portal. I, I think I would be surprised and disappointed if the starting five offensive linemen that we saw for Ohio State are the starting five offensive linemen in September. Um, I'll just go ahead and say it. I, I don't think... I don't think Ohio State has two starter level tackles on the team right now. Yeah, and that's that's going to be a big issue moving forward to this season with with how much talent is everywhere else on that offense there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a concern here. And, you know, it, it needs to be said that the offense didn't look good. But the defense, it's, it's, it's the ultimate sp spring game conundrum. Hey, everyone, the defense looked really good. But then that transversely means that the offense didn't look all that good. And if but, but, to, but to be fair, though, Jared, like every spring game, yeah. the offense runs a very, very vanilla type of offense. And too. the defense so it's very, runs it's a very, very, very uh, vanilla type defense, but... I think that always favors the defense. Like, I think mm -hmm. hyper simplicity favors the defense. It does. And you also have to look at talent loss. We talked about three offensive linemen gone from last year's offense. Quarterback gone. And we're going to talk about McCord. Don't think we aren't. Quarterback gone. Um, 
Mecca, Buka, Julian Fleming didn't play. They're on the roster, but they didn't play. Marvin Harrison played for two or three drives. He didn't play the entire game. He didn't. I don't even think played into the second quarter. Um, they didn't have their two starting running backs. No Mayan Williams, no Travion Henderson. No, nope. Williams was in for a little bit. Did mine? He, he had a few carries. Yeah, he had about four or five carries in that. Yeah, in, four uh, carries for game. 14 yards. OK, so more like Marvin Harrison in that case. He was barely in. Mm-hmm. Barely yeah. played. Yeah. Two to three drives. Like I so said, same 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 situation as is with Marvin Harrison. I, I think that. And, you know, and, and to be fair. On the defensive side of the ball, you didn't see Steel Chambers or Tommy Eichenberg. Just to be fair. Um, yes. I, I think I've seen we've seen NFL coaches do this where like once a guy becomes veteran to a certain point. You know, you just don't you just don't you just don't put a, a, as, as much wear on their tires. I don't know how banged up Ike or Steele or Fleming or any of those guys were as much as it was just like, let the young guys go out there. Yeah. And speaking of the young guys, Jared. Still came out uh, of the tunnel on crutches. I, yeah, I know. But again, like to, to what extent? Tate had had himself a pretty good game. He, yeah. he made some made some really good catches. Uh, made a good route to um, score a touchdown. Um, late, true, late in the he game was hauling there. ass on those crutches. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think Tate really made a um, name for himself to get some time in this year. Now it's going to be really tough with the with the talent that's ahead of him, but. Definitely, I think he definitely might have found himself somewhere in that, um, in the, um, in the too deep there, so in the too deep there too somewhere. Deep. I think so. Yeah. It's yeah. Old. Let's, let's, let, yeah, let's look. Let's look. Ah, uh, no, he's talented and he's very good and he's going to get on the field, but too deep? Top six yeah, wide so if, receivers? So if you're, if you if you're running three wide receivers, if you're running three wide receivers, Okay. Yeah. If you're running three wide receivers, sure. You got, you got, um, yeah. Let's Mecca, let's just say Mecca, Fleming, Fleming, Ibuka, Harrison. Yeah, those are your three. And then Ballard. Uh huh. Who else are you going to put in with Ballard? Um, I think Gray's is also okay. looked incredibly good during camp. Um, okay. I think you could very easily. Um, I'm sorry, I can't think of his name. Antwi. A- Antwi, I-, I think, is in that conversation as well. He, he, uh, he, I-, I was had... talking about the former walk-on. I can't remember his name. Someone help me, please. Oh, uh, X. Yeah, Xavier. Um, he was in. Ba- Xavier was in the two deep last year, essentially. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I. I mean, we'll, we'll see as he develops, but I think it. Noah Rogers really, looked really good. I'm not. From what from what I saw, I was, I was impressed with what I saw from Tate in, the, in that game. Hundred percent. I'm not trying to down Tate whatsoever. I think he's a future star at Ohio State. One hundred percent. I just don't. I just think. I I think too deep is. I don't know. I'm. I don't know. Jaden Ballard, Noah Rogers, and X I might be like J- Jaden Ballard's the fourth wide receiver. Can can we all agree on that? Is that a thing we can all agree on? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, I, I think you could make a case for who's. Yeah, I think you could make a case for like who's fourth and who's fifth. And I think there's a lot of cases to be made for who's fourth and who's fifth. And I also think probably, Kyle, it's worth pointing out that I don't. 
we're I think we're going to see more tight end play this year. Which is not to say that they're going to get a ton of catches before anyone starts dropping your tight ends and whatnot in there. Uh, so many lessons. Uh, it's from Travion. Officially cleared. Hey, awesome. Day after the spring game, though, huh? Weird how that how that lined up. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cade was in midseason form. He was. Um, I mean, there's there's a, there's a reason he he was the first to have his black well. his black stripe removed from this class. And it's a hell of a class to achieve that too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And again, I just think we're going to see more tight ends on the field this year, which, you know, if we're talking about a, you know, six deep, you know, or, you know, two deep, six player deep um, for wide receivers, that's also also going to cut into the amount of reps that your number five and your number six get as well. That's true. Yeah. Waiting for the day to break out the 14 personnel. You keep waiting <laughs> on that one. Yeah. You keep waiting on that one. Uh, uh, tight ends, by the way, Joe Royer looked good. Um, I, I think we're starting to see uh, G. Scott get more comfortable in that role. He's starting to look like a tight end playing tight end and not a wide receiver playing tight end. Um, St still needed to work on his hands. I think there was there's two plays that I recall. Where, Are you talking about I mean, Royer? No, it wasn't Royer. It was it was G. Scott where it just fell out of his hand. Was it? I don't specifically yeah. remember yeah. that, but my memory's garbage, mm -hmm. so whatever. Stover needs to also. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of talent in the tight end room. I don't know if there's like a star in the tight end room right now, as far as like someone who can do all the things. I think everyone's a little bit better than they were last. I don't. I don't mean to say a little bit. I think everyone's better than they were last year. But I also don't. I don't see. I don't see a do it all guy ready to take over the tight end position right now. Um. But then again, when is Ohio State really hardly ever had that? Give Thurman a year. I. I don't disagree, Gangland. I, I think that could very well be the case, which is why when I was saying that, I kept saying right now, right now, right now. I don't see a guy who can do it right now. I don't see a guy who can be all the things right now. <laughs> yeah. I was qualifying that specifically for Thurman. So running backs, move, just talk about the running backs real quick here. Uh, kind of go along. Um, we had a question uh, from somebody in our in our Discord. Uh this this will cast at discord dot com. Uh, nope. From Soup Boy, what do you discord what do you th the sloop cast dot com? I got them backwards. Yes, thank you. Yes, you did. What do you what do you think is the running back rotation for the upcoming season? Will there be games where we see five of our running backs get a carry? No. All right, let's have this conversation again. Um, Ohio State traditionally, traditionally does not give the ball to more than two running backs in any significant volume. Last year was a very rare exception because of injuries. Yep. Is a very rare exception last year. I think the number three running back had the last time I think I looked this up at some point. So I'm going to be somewhere close to correct. Give, give me a give me a couple year buffer on this. Um, the last time a third running back, so third in carries, the last time a third running back had as many carries as Ohio State's third running back had this uh, had last year was 1989. 1989. That is many coaches ago. Um. I don't see three running backs getting a lot of carries. Um, I don't know if he fits in. And I know Pryor will fit in. It's just sort of a where and how. Um, 
Pryor might get a fair amount of snaps at running back, but a lot of that might be as a pass catcher out of the backfield it, it, or down situations. I think will it, maybe be Pryor's role. But as far as so if we're looking strictly at carries, Henderson won Mayan two. Yeah, it's it so interesting, especially after even split like 60, 40 Henderson. Yeah, especially after what we saw last year, like you have you have four running backs who who got to get the ball a um, a good amount last year just because of injuries and all that too. And then you then you throw in uh, Pryor in there as well too, and I, I think Ohio State is going to be set up better if there's going to be injuries uh, this year if. They're going to be set up a lot better than they were last year. For sure. Um, and as far as, you know, if I say like Pryor's a third down specialist, he's going to do a lot of blocking, a lot of pass catching. And then Henderson and Mayan are going to get most of the carries. I, and I know some people are out there saying, well, what about Hayden? It's a good question. I hope he stays with the team. I, I know we don't speculate the conversation Tony and I had a while back. Uh, one of the weeks he filled in for Kyle. Um, one of the conversations Tony and I had was like old guard, old policy was like, don't speculate about transfers. And I think we have to at least somewhat reevaluate that because at a certain point in time, if you said, if I were to say the phrase to you, Dallin Hayden's going to transfer, then once upon a time ago, that would translate to he's not good enough to be a Buckeye. That's what that used to mean. Mm hmm. And that's why you never speculated on that, because it, it, it felt like an insult, right? But in the year 2023, I think it's almost a compliment. When I say Dallin Hayden might transfer, it's because I think a lot of teams would love to have him. Um, so I don't know how we necessarily deal with, you know, the tried and true policy of like not talking about transfers, but I, I think if I'm talking about speculating about a transfer because it's a compliment, it kind of feels like maybe it's okay to do that. Cause it, when I say, man, what's Hayden going to do? It's because I think he's too good to sit on the bench again. And I think he might know that. And I think he might see a, a, a healthy Henderson and a healthy Mayan Williams and a healthy Evan Pryor. And I think it's, 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 it's tough to look at that room. That's all. It's a compliment to him. I just want to be, state that it's, it's a huge compliment to him. But Kyle, let's, uh, Let's talk about one Mr. Kyle, Accor Kyle McCord. Um, yeah. Not a probably, probably, the thing, probably the thing every, that a lot of people are going to talk oh, about I know. is we how... We waited 20 minutes to talk about the quarterback. Oh, my God. God, we're bad at podcasting. Or we're good at podcasting. One of the two. Uh, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, it they much does. Yeah. They... You, you, look at the, you look at the stats there and you're like, Damn. That's not a good day for Kyle McCord there, and 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 yeah, you could you could look at it that way. If you actually like really pay attention to what happened in the games, yeah, terrible the podcasters, I know, right? Uh, no time, no time in the pocket no. at all, which is which is probably the key thing we talked about. The very first thing was the offensive linemen. He, I mean, he did, that, he that, did, he did that have, is he, the primary he, story of the spring game is the defensive line humiliating the offensive line. Yeah, him him and Tristan just didn't have time to to really do anything. And honestly when when Kyle actually got time, he threw he threw a touchdown. He th he threw that touchdown when he actually had time. But but yeah. 
And you, you saw you saw his um his capability of being able to escape the pocket and get those few extra yards there that may need to uh, if if a play isn't there, which is which is some positive thing to think about moving forward. Uh, Sounds like the defensive line might be great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and it is. And the linebackers are, and just, I don't know, let's stick stick with McCord for a moment. Um, But it's hard to talk about McCord without talking about how good the defense looked. And this was his first spring game as a starter, as a presumed starter. I know Ryan Day says that the quarterback competition is not over yet, which, if I'm being real, with everyone sounds R- a lot. Rule number one, Jared. Jared, yeah. rule number one. Rule number one, the doctor lies. Um, if I'm being real with everyone, I think that's, you know, I, I'll i just say it. I'll just say it. Because, again, I think it's a compliment to Devin Brown. Ryan Day might name a starter the day after the transfer portal closes. <laughs> I'll I'll go ahead and say it. I think Kyle McCord's the guy. I don't I don't I thought that before Devin Brown got hurt and now Devin Brown got hurt. Doesn't help. Um Devin was told to fake it until he starts next year. By the way, and I know I've personally pushed this narrative a lot. I'm really starting to second guess Kyle McCord as a one and done in college football is a starter. You know what I mean? Um, I think that in many ways, the NFL has looked at a history of one year starters, either not panning out or being slow to pan out in the NFL. And I think that a lot of NFL teams would rather have you know, a two, three year starter than a one year starter, even if that one year was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think because of the changing attitudes of the NFL and quite frankly, what's going to be a pretty good quarterback class next year, I think there's a real decent chance that even if Kyle McCord absolutely lights college football on fire this year. I think there's still a very decent chance he comes back for his senior year. Yeah. It's it's kind of funny. You're looking at the stats here, 18 for 34, 184 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Great, great, great thing that um, I'm going to uh, take this from Tony Gerdeman. He, He took the past 11 years of of the spring games here uh minus 2020 since 2020 didn't exist and and then um compared all the quarterbacks who threw a decent amount um in the spring games and listed them all out here and this year yeah Kyle McCord and, and Tristan to all in the bottom 10 of the um of all the quarterbacks in the past 11 years in the spring games. But if you look at Kyle McCord the previous year and in 21, he was, he had two, both of those were in the top 10 as well too. Yeah. It's so amazing how that works out. You, you look at one and the other there. I, I guess my point is that, yeah, the numbers don't look great, but it's, it, it doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't mean that he's going to be a bad quarterback this year. But and you know, and I know it's been thrown I mean, around. Look at it's this. been thrown I mean, around. Cardale, Twitter. Cardale, Cardale Jones threw it nineteen for forty-two for for three hundred yards, and and he ended up having a superb a a miracle. He had he had a not, he had a pretty good he had a pretty good year that year too. Here was it, twenty fifteen. Okay. Um. And then, or, or you look at or you look at Dwayne Haskins, who threw nine for 19 in 2018 more than that year. He he was one of the had one of the most accurate um, one of the most accurate um, completion ratings in, in Ohio State quarterback history. Yeah, I think the Dwayne Haskins 2018 game is maybe the best because I, I know a lot of people have thrown around like 
Justin Fields looked like garbage, straight up garbage. <laughs> in four his, for thirteen. Four, four for, for 13. thirteen. And I know that that those numbers have been thrown around Twitter a lot recently, and people have rightfully pointed out that Fields is only with the team for a couple months at that point, mm-hmm. which is a fair thing to point out. Um, but. Dwayne Haskins is this is this kind of an identical situation. Dwayne Haskins to Kyle McCord and Dwayne Haskins broke many Ohio State records in 2018 and had a crap. Kyle, I think you posted or you pasted yep, the same I did. thing twice. I did. Um, Hold on. The and I think that um, well, lost myself. Dwayne Haskins, again, had one of the best years an Ohio State quarterback has ever had the year that he start the one year that he started and that one year nine for 19, 120 yards in the spring game. Point is, is that the spring game is simply one of many, many, many spring practices. And we overweigh it because it's the one that we, the fans get to watch. Yes. Yep. The things that concern me and by things I, I'm talking mostly about the offensive line. The things that concern me about this team are the things that I saw that were consistent with the reporting coming out of those camps. Yeah. Which is that the offensive line, especially at the offensive tackles, are not cutting it. Um, and it, it is absolutely worth noting that they're going against amazing competition. But they are not cutting it. Um, it's Ohio State's going to try very, very hard. I, I think ideally, I think ideally, what happens is that Ohio State gets a r- amazing left tackle out of the transfer portal. They move Fryer back over to right tackle. We already know who the guards are, and then you know we'll see who wins the center job. Yep. Yep. Okay, Kyle. Z, um, Spike, Z Spikes mentioning Joey B dominated the the list there in the past eleven years in the spring games. <laughs> yeah. Only eight quarterback rating points over Kyle McCord in twenty twenty one. That's not that's not that much. We had three of the top five spots. <laughs> no, from that standpoint, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's an alternative history where uh, Joe Burrow doesn't get hurt, doesn't fall behind Dwayne Haskins, but we don't live in we don't live on that planet. So that's a, that's a different yep. Earth. All right, so let's let's move on to the defensive side now. Then Jared, I, I liked what I saw from the defense. They they it needs to be stated. It needs to be stated. They were going against an Ohio State offense, replacing three of their offensive linemen didn't have all the things I already said at the beginning of the show missing most of their talent, either to the NFL draft or to injury. This was practically a brand new offense that, that Ohio state had on the field. So it's not like they shut down last year's Ohio state offense in the spring game. Fair. Fair. Um, That being said, I think that even against lesser competition. You can simply tell when a defense is gelling, how they're passing players between the zones, yeah. how they're jumping on routes. Um, I think that we are seeing a defense that is a lot more comfortable in what they're doing. And yes, the secondary always looks much better when the defense is forcing the quarterback to throw the ball quickly. It's amazing how that works. It does, right? We did not, I already mentioned, no Steel Chambers, no Tommy Eichenberg. Got to see a lot of the young linebackers play, and I like what I saw out of them. Um, I thought Burke looked like Burke again. Um, I don't ever... um, I kind of don't even ever remember seeing any of the safeties or really any of the cornerbacks making any plays, which is kind of what you want. Um, 
I, I, I don't even remember Ransom doing anything. I, ki- I don't ever remember. Um, Kyle, can you help me out? Do you still have the pronunciation? The, the, <laughs> the young corner from from Ole Miss. I really need that like spelled phonetically then tattooed on my wrist. Um, Ransom had coverage on Royer for one play, but he uh, didn't get targeted. Then he didn't get targeted then, did he? Um, who took the shit angle on Chip's long touchdown? I will have to watch again to answer that question. I'm not sure. Um, Gangland says it was Carico. Um, maybe he underestimated Chip's speed. But I thought Carico had some good plays. Um, I really liked I just generally what we saw out of the young the young linebackers. I, I really, really liked um, I have tackle stats here. Yeah, Gabe Powers uh, led the team in total tackles, solo tackles. Um, CJ Hicks, I thought, looked amazing as well. He tied he tied with Gabe Powers for solo tackles. Um, Sonny Styles is out there looking good. Um, Carico had uh, we saw a lot of Hero Canoe in this game, which I, I think Ohio State's looking for a a a fourth defensive tackle. Um, Tank from from Maryland decided to go to Arkansas instead. I think maybe because Ohio State was looking at him as the fourth defensive tackle on the team. You know, Tank was like, no, I'm going to go somewhere else where I can at least be the second defensive tackle on the team. Um, I thought Ryan Turner looked good in coverage. Um, I just saw a very competent defense. Um, Kenyatta Jackson jumped off the screen several times. Cody Simon looks like... Cody Simon looks more athletic than I think I'm used to seeing Cody Simon look. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it's just comfort. Maybe it's not athleticism. Maybe he's just comfort, more comfortable in the defense and therefore isn't hesitating. But he looked more athletic than I remember Cody Simon looking. Um, I, I really liked, I just really liked what I saw of the defense. Yeah, I I did too. There's there's definitely some things that you really liked to really liked from from them here. Uh, I think CJ Hicks made some great plays. I uh, saw Sony Styles running all over the field there. Uh, yeah, um, and Cody Simon making making some good plays as well. There's definitely a lot of a lot of great things to take from that game. Yeah, and again, I just saw what I saw in the defense was just a more comfortable version of the defense. Yeah. And again, they're running a more simplified version of the defense and against more simplified version of the offense and the quarterbacks were getting rushed and therefore the defense was not getting spread out. Um, so there's a lot of things working in the favor of the Ohio state back end for sure. Um, so, you know, like I said, it's a lot easier to cover a team when the quarterback is immediately scrambling out of the pocket or having to get rid of the ball really quickly. Obviously, just a, a dream scenario for anyone in coverage. Uh, I think we're going to have to lean on the the defense early on this year until the O-line gets figured out. Probably. I mean... And also, just until Kyle McCord figures it out. It's a big leap. By the way, I hate revisionist history. I hate revisionist history. The guy who um, was doing the announcing, not not the color commentators, Igbe Nosen. Igbe Nosen. I'm going to work on that. Is, is the cornerback from Mississippi State. No, it was Ole Miss. Excuse me, Ole, Ole Miss. Miss. Yeah, no, not Joshua Perry. Joshua Perry was great. And by the way, Joshua Perry actually corrected him, which made me very happy. You almost never hear the color commentator correct the announcer. The he was talking about how yeah you, know, you have to be patient with a quarterback in their first few starts. 
and Chris whatever was just like, well, the thing about C.J. Stroud, C.J. Stroud was C.J. Stroud right away. No, the fuck he wasn't. It wasn't even that long ago. He had a rough September. Those first three or so games for C.J. Stroud were not great. It wasn't even that long ago, and people are already revising that history. I don't know who that guy was, but they, they need to put him back in the oven. He's not done baking yet. <laughs> the guy on the left there. <laughs> the guy who wasn't Joshua Perry. He's yes. not done. He's not done baking yet. Put him back in the oven. Um, That's like saying JT was elite. I mean, JT Barrett was elite in some aspects. Um, unfortunately, throwing the ball downfield was not one of them. Um, he was a lead at the read option. He really, really was. And a lead leader. Um, I, I think a brilliant football mind in many ways. Um, automatic at the goal line. Goddamn spikes. No, no kidding. Um, never, you never had red zone issues when JT Barrett was the quarterback. Um, Definitely, he was a leader and he definitely needs to be a coach. 100%. I can't wait to see JT Barrett, the football coach. Cannot wait for that. Anyway, but that we're not talking about JT Barrett today. Um, I don't know. It's, it's again, it's hard um, because everything was super vanilla and they, they, they were just wrecking. The, the one thing I, I kind of wish maybe they had like pulled here. Here's the problem, though. You pull if you, even if you pull JT out, we're talking about two of now now uh, and, and you pull Sawyer out and like maybe try and give the offensive tackles a little bit of a break. No, <laughs> no, because now, now you're just sending uh, Kenyatta Jackson out there. You know what I mean? You're sending Caden Curry out there. It's not, it's not much of a break. Um, I, I, I'm just saying I would have liked to have seen the secondary tested a bit more. Um, thought we'd hear from him more. One game, one game in the in in practice. It's it's one practice out of was it 15 spring practices true yeah i mean like let's not throw all of the weight in the world on on this um anyway but i'm just saying i would have kyle i would have liked to see a little seven on seven maybe <laughs> maybe maybe this year <laughs> i'm thinking i would like to see some seven on seven like i i kind of wanted to i kind of want to see I want to see Kyle. I wanted to see Kyle McCord against the secondary um, and not Kyle McCord against the defensive line. Um, but by the way, just because I wanted to say this at the top and then I just forgot to. I love the format of this spring game. Offense. Was. You know, offense was scarlet. Defense was gray. The, the the first drive we saw was the first string versus the first string. That's money. Absolutely yeah. money. That is what I want to see. I 100% want to see the first string against the first string. And then, you know, they punt the ball. And now it's it's Scarlet still has the ball because that's just the format we're working under. But now it's the backups. And guess what? The backups are actually tackling. So now we're getting some actual tackling in a spring game. And, you know, they, they came up with a point system. And I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like going into the game theory on whether or not the uh, whether or not the scoring system was fair. But, hey, that's just a theory. It's, it's just game theory. But the point here. Bert Kyle on that one. Um, 
I don't feel like getting in all the game theory of the point if the if the scoring system was fair or not. But I I'm just saying I I was very very happy to see the first string offense go against the first string defense. It is what I want out of a spring game. Even if they weren't tackling right away, even if like okay, <laughs> um, Marvin out, mine Williams out, a bunch of other guys out. Okay, start tackling. Um, I'm I'm just I'm just cool with it. I'm just I just I really I I have complained a lot. People are like, oh, Ohio State used to sell out the shoe for the spring game, and now it's quote unquote only seventy thousand. Put on this show. This was an entertaining spring game, which, by the way, isn't the thing I've said in a long time. I think the Ohio State spring games have been very boring as of late. Um, the two hand touch doesn't help. Even when no. they were not tackling, they're still doing more of a thud, what they call a thud system, which is better. Um, and even then, they moved into both sides tackling, not that much later um i thought this was a good spring game it's just from a entertainment standpoint from a fan standpoint and i think again what i want to see as a fan i want to see all the first stringers on the field at the same time i don't want to see a mishmash of offensive linemen against the mishmash of defense no i want to see the first string against first string it's exactly what i want and i just i love i love that we got it i'm just you know that needs to be said. We've complained. I know Kyle and I have complained for a while about the spring game being boring or the spring game not being able to learn much from the spring spring game. Um, this was an entertaining product. I, I think you, we saw most of what we wanted to see. That being said, I, I maybe would have liked to have seen a seven on seven just to see Kyle McCord actually have a chance uh, against the secondary. Yeah. Just give him like, give him three and a half seconds to throw the ball instead of two. I mm -hmm. think that changes things a lot. If he's not throwing the ball on the run, which by the way, Kyle McCord looks decent running out of the pocket. I think people were worried we were going to get Peyton Manning back there and he's not CJ Stroud and he's not Justin Fields, but he's not Peyton Manning either. Um, he looked mobile enough. I think people are, you know, real worried about just having a statue back there. It's not the case. He is mobile enough. Uh, the last good spring game was 17, excuse me, 18. I, I don't remember them well enough to. Well, 18, 18 is when you had, well, actually both of your 17 is Haskins and Burrow and 18 was also Haskins and Burrow. And in both of those years, they both lit it up kind of. Yeah, <laughs> lit it up the, as much as you could in a spring game. By the way, just going to toss this out there. I think, in my opinion, um, Devin Brown would not have led the other squad. I think you probably still get um, Tristan. Uh, is it Jebia? Is that how I pronounce that? Tristan Jebia. Um, I think he's still leading the second offense. Um and Devin Brown and Kyle McCord are going swapsies with the first stringers. Just a thought. I just saw a lot of people suggest that, oh, you know, oh, we, I guess we have to watch Tristan Jevia throw the ball instead of Devin Brown. And I'm like, I think I think that's still the format we would have seen. I think it still would have been Jebia leading the other offense. Just, just tossing it out there. I'm pretty sure that's what we would have seen. Anything else you want to take from this game, Jared? Anything else that we missed out? Oh, I'm sure we missed something. I, I won't realize what it is until after we quit recording. And then I'm like, oh, shit. I, did, I wanted to talk about this, but we didn't talk about that. Uh, how about this? Uh, place kicking. Oh. Eh. Yeah, I was just going to I was going <laughs> to mention, mention that as my last thing. Eh. Uh, people are going to miss Ruggles. Oh, yeah. I mean. I know he missed his last kick, and I know people are still upset about that, but I think y'all are going to want him back here real soon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Might, well, that offensive tackle might not be the only place they're looking in the transfer portal. Um, Kyle, I feel like I feel like whenever Ohio State uh, runs into a kicking issue, 
we tend to steal someone from the triangle area. I feel like we've stolen both a Duke kicker and a North Carolina kicker recently. Or am I mistaken? Um, you got any good kickers? You got any, any good kickers down there in Raleigh, Durham, Kyle? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's the correct answer. Uh, Kyle, do you have any more Ask Sloopcast questions we can cover before we wrap this one up? Uh, let's see here. Some of them we might have already answered here. Uh, is the defense legit or is the offense lagging behind? Answered that pretty much the entire episode. Yeah, that, that was the th- that was that was basically the theme of the episode. Uh, how about how many average reps per game should we expect to see for Hicks? For CJ Hicks? Um, God, that is tough. Um, I could see him coming in. My my theory right now is that we see Hicks come in in obvious passing situations, probably to in, in relief of Eichenberg. Um, that I think that would probably be my assumption at this point. Dude needs to play 100 percent. He absolutely needs to play. Um, it's it's yeah, I, I think I think. Becoming the linebacker in obvious passing situations feels like a strong possibility. Not like a not like in a dime situation, not in like a third and super long, in which case you're probably taking him out and putting a put you're taking the middle linebacker out and putting a quarter a corner back in. Um but just like in a Oh, his name wasn't even Chris. <laughs> The, the, the announcer let's just keep calling him chris let's not let's not totally trash the dude's <laughs> name publicly his name was chris um haha posey called him chris really that's hilarious <laughs> maybe kyle's wrong maybe not who cares <laughs> um Am I? I don't know i don't know is that him that's him i don't know He's not done baking yet. Um, okay, any other questions? No, they're not the same. Okay, then what I got here was wrong. <laughs> no, Where that's not I? the same. Okay. I'm oh, not, I'm I, pulled not... up, I pulled up last year's. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Can we get that guy back? I don't remember him, which is a good thing. It's what you want. It's what you want out of a play-by-play, unless it's Gus Johnson, in which case, yeah. Listen, he was probably calling USFL games. Oh, ah, I found him. I That's found him. It is point. Chris. It is Chris. <laughs> oh man, I really like the version of the story where Posey called him by the wrong name. Yep, yeah, but Chris Vosters. Um, oh, that's him. Put him back in the oven. He's not done cooking yet. <laughs> he needs a little bit more time. We stuck the toothpick. We we stuck the toothpick in. It came back with a little bit of, with a little bit of batter still on it. Gus should be the only one calling Buckeye games. I I I I, I would live in that world. Gus or Paul Keels. That's TV versus radio, Kyle. Come on. I don't care. <laughs> Listen, if Paul Keels wants to start calling them on TV too, I'm fine with that. See, that's uh, the problem. The, the, they're opposing, both, they're both, the opposing team might not be fine with it, though. They're, they're both they're both the play by play. It'd be hard for one yeah. of them to be the color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, exactly. Now, if one was the other, then yeah, hell yes. <laughs> Combine them then. <laughs> Put them together. Any more questions, Kyle? Um, there's still no way Mar- Marv is is human, correct? No, 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 no. All right, Absolutely and then the last w- last one here. What would you decide if you were Fry, Heartline, and Day on the which blocking scheme to utilize this upcoming here based upon the spring scrimmage? The well, one that works. <laughs> The one that works. <laughs> I don't know. Like offensive. You would talk about not done baking yet. The offensive line is not done baking yet. 
Um, a lot of that might depend upon personnel. Um, and I quite frankly think we don't know who the personnel are yet. Um, I don't think we know who the left or the right tackle is right now. And I say that because I think there's a decent chance that Fryer Fryer is good enough to play, but I think he is maybe more comfortable at right tackle um, and probably should be at right tackle. Uh, but then that obviously begs the question, who's going to play left tackle? Donovan Jackson, in theory, could. I, 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 you know, we talked about that before spring started. Uh, Jackson spent all spring at guard. I think, ideally, uh, Jackson stays at left guard. Fryer moves to right tackle. And Ohio State gets the best, the absolute best offensive tackle out of the transfer portal is the ideal situation. Yep. Um, but we'll see if that works out. Um, yep. right. And that is all the questions for. Do we for see more here. zone then? I, 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 the only thing I'm willing to say about the offensive line right now is that it's bad. Like, let's get them good. And then and let's figure out who the starting five are first. And then we'll worry about scheme later. Because sometimes the scheme might come down to your personnel, so let's let's figure out who the personnel are first. Kyle, is that you said that was the last question? That was that, Jared. Is it spring twenty fourteen bad? No, because there was no transfer portal in twenty fourteen. <laughs> This can be fixed. There'll be good. There'll be good offensive tackles in the portal. Um, I, there already are some good offensive tackles who have announced they're going into the portal. Um, I don't know where Ohio State stands with that. You're not allowed to actually contact him yet. Do we get the Georgia kid? That's a defensive tackle, um, and probably not. And I just say that because. Again, I don't think Ohio State's looking for a starter at defensive tackle. And that guy's probably going to go somewhere where he's going to be the starter. But can he block? That, you know, Spikes, it's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question. Defensive tackles, though, are guards. We already have guards. I think we have plenty of guards. Need an off need, need an offensive tackle. All right, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by uh, Playing to Vapors. Why not? Why not do Playing to Vapors? So, um, oh, Kyle, I totally forgot about Kyle's Corner. I greatly apologize, good sir. Oh, that's that's all fine. Uh, something that you you mentioned in our Discord earlier, Jared, really got my attention. And okay, this is this story is about me. I'm 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 all in. <laughs> wow, look at look at Jared here. Jeez, <laughs> I'm um, in Kyle's corner this week. <laughs> uh, I know there was a lot of talk. I, if, if you've listened to us in the past year and certain NIL programs are not what they are made out to be here. And I, th I think, I think there's finally a good one here and that's uh, the 1870 society that um, came out here. Um, lot, lot, there, there's a lot of like great people who's running that, that, uh, that organization there. And I definitely, if you're really thinking about wanting to help out the Ohio state NIL I'd definitely check out 80s, 70s society if you're looking for an organization. Yeah. Um, I said this on Twitter. I'll say it again now. Um, this is the first Ohio State NIL organization. Is that the correct word? Um, this is the first Ohio State NIL organization that check the, the, the two boxes that I believe are essential. 
One is that they their primary interest, their, their primary motivation is to help out Ohio State athletes and Ohio State athletics. It's not about self-aggrandizing. It's not about buying influence. It is. It is. It is the about first. It is about it is the, the athletics. First, it is the, the first second. Four, oh, sorry. Real quick. The second box that they're checking is that I think they actually have the the money, the resources, the personnel running it to do enough to make an impact. I think we saw good organizations with good people, but maybe not the financial pool, not the influence pool. And I think we saw people who had the money, but whose motivations were wrong. Um, they're more interested in self-aggrandizing than they are actually in helping Ohio State Athletics. So I'm just saying there's two essential boxes that were required to get me to actually donate to an NIL organization. And I think 1870, in my opinion, is the first organization to check both of those boxes. And if you're asking the question, then, well, Jared, did you sign up? Yeah, I did. Yeah, the 1870 Society is the first for-profit NIL collective supporting Ohio State Athletics. And, and, like, and like what Jared, Jared stated here, it's run by uh, some great, great people here. Uh, Tavis Powell is on there. Uh, Todd, the um, uh, guy over Thank at... Thank you, Gangland. Um, guy over at um, uh, 97 won the fan and also over at... I think he, he does the Dayton news, I think, as well. Uh, he's, he's the I, president over at 1870. Uh, yeah, I think he's former 97 won the fan. Um, okay. Oh, thank you, Zach. Um, the yeah. So, uh, yeah. And um, the the head of 11 Warriors as well is involved uh, with it. I did not know that. OK. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So I'm just saying this is the first NIL organization at Ohio State that I think has the resources to get shit done and whose primary focus is actually helping the athletes and the athletic program and not, like I said, self-aggrandizing, self-promoting, buying mm -hmm. personal, buying personal interest, personal influence. So anyway, I, yeah, no, I, I have a lot of hope that, uh, 1870 is going to do the work needed to get Ohio state back. And this is starting to sound like an ad. It's not Kyle and I have no relationship, no affiliation at all there. Um, nope. it's just my honest opinion. I've not seen a, I have not seen an NIL organization to this point that I would even slightly consider giving my money to. And I have given my money to 1870. So. All right. That's it. Jared. Money where my mouth is. Yep. That is, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Um, well. All right, Kyle, that's it. That's that is the end of the show. Um, Ohio State did pick up two recruits this weekend. Um We'll talk about them more next week. I, I think uh, next week we're going to get back into recruiting. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to uh, ask everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. This is Playing to Vapors.